All right. All right, yeah, let's get started. And, and I'll show you guys what we've done thus far for the artifact. Here it is. Plamod, Plamod. So we're, we're chipping away at the, at the artifact. And um, this has been quite the journey because, and I've mentioned this before, but I'm basically making this up as I go along. I don't really have a plan in mind for the color scheme. I was like, let's go with orange. That was as much as I had thought. I was like, let's start with orange. And then, uh, and then I continued to make adjustments. You know, we uh, we started painting in layers with uh, a black prime, and then dark brown, and then uh, and then we went on to pink, and then orange, and um, we settled upon this. And I, you know, there's still a lot of adjustments that have to be made and, and separating the parts. It's Yowza, what up, Yowza? How's it going? Eddie, they were the ones helping us out when we couldn't get stuff in Japan. Oh shit, nice. Plamod. Yeah, I'm not familiar with Plamod. Um, but yeah, that's cool. Helping out our neighbors. Our neighbors. America's hat. Also, I got some news for you. Can I post a link? Oh uh, yeah, sure. You know, I trust Yowza so long as it's not, uh, you know, something naughty. Hit me up with that link, Yaza. Let's see. Let's get our beverage today ready to go. Today's drink is Pure North Energy Drink. Oh, Gundam Battle Operation 2? Oh, shit. Wait, is that... So that's, uh... That's, like, new for North America? That's the game that you're... That you've been playing, right? Uh, greetings PC Pause, we're happy to announce the dates for the next Steam open beta test, January 16th at 9pm Pacific Standard Time, and January 8th, 18th. Oh, so is this a... Oh, so are we gonna get in on this, guys? You guys wanna push my shit in? You guys wanna... Is Yaza gonna... Uh, yell at me for sucking at this game. Yaza doesn't post filth like me. <laughs> nice. I'm gonna... I'm gonna bookmark that. So that's not even too far away, which is good. Exciting. So that news just dropped, huh? You get free rolls, free suits, 30 tokens, and 100,000 in game points. Hell yeah. These, these seem like good things. I don't actually know what any of those things mean, but it sounds really good. I like I like free things. That's the other thing. This game, when it comes out, will then become a... Uh, is this a paid, uh, a paid game? Do you know what I mean? Sorry if I've asked this before. I, 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 I got... There's so many Gundam games, I get confused, to be honest. But is this... Yeah, is this a game that's free to play? Or, or when it comes out fully, will I have to pay shmoney for it? Let me know. And this is the game that you like, Yowza, uh, the previous version that you've played of a lot of, correct? All right, let's get started painting. Let's get started to painting. And also I saw Eddie's comment, I should try painting in SD. You know, I was I was at the hobby store yesterday, Trinity Hobby. They, I was, think, I was looking for the Ariel SD because I know they had it the, the previous time I was there and they didn't have it this time. And it's, again, it's just one of those things where you know, if you see something and you like it, uh, you might want to get it. You can't just say to yourself, like, yeah, you know, maybe next time I'll get it next time. Especially when there was, like, only one of them. I should have known better. But I think I want to get either the the SD Sinanju or the SD... SD Nightingale. Pretty sure the store had one of those. I, I've been thinking about it, Eddie. I've definitely been been thinking about that. Free to play, and because of testing, no microtransactions till the official release. Hells, yes. Cool. So you're you're quite experienced at this game, Yaza. But what about Eddie? What's the knowledge? Who here's got the knowledge? And it's Carmi. Who's gonna be the leader? Yaza's gonna be team leader. How's it going, Carmi? How are you today? I have to say. Uh. I, I was getting annoyed on your behalf with all your internet issues, Carmi. 
Uh, hopefully you can get that sorted out. It's It's been a thing for a while. But that really, really sucks. I mean, like, like it, it's impacting your job too, right? Because, I mean, you work from home. Whew, I'm wearing this thick-ass sweater. But also the lights are kind of roasting me. We might have to change a plan. I was, I was like, I like this sweater. I never get to wear it. It's my cozy winter sweater. Anyways. Yep. So once again, guys, we are working on this. The Gundam artifact. And, you know, we want to finish this soon. We want to finish this soon. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just a artifact. <laughs> but, um... It's a lot of adjustments. Like, I'm finding that I, I've been changing my mind about parts of the model and I have to change it. Or, you know, the other day I was like, let's experiment with just putting a huge wash of black ink on this. Let's just, let's just, uh, let's just do a black ink wash on this whole thing. And I did, and I was like, uh, that's kind of cool, but now it's like really grimy looking, which I didn't necessarily want, so I had to go and fix it. Anyways. I figure it's a, such a small model. Let's kind of just experiment and kind of go nuts with this thing. That reminds me, there's a... Um... Oh, I should use a different brush. Where, 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 where? What kind of brush should I use? Small brush. There's a... Uh... Oh, let's just use this. Oh, man, I want to say Chip Foss. Chris Foss. Uh, there's a book illustrator going all the way back to the 70s. I think the 70s. Like, he's been at it for a very long time. He's illustrated uh, covers for sci-fi novels. His name is Chris Foss. And you might be familiar with his work because he did the ship designs for the guardians of the galaxy at least the first movie if you recall the milano and some of the ship designs in that movie are very colorful a lot of geometric shapes a lot of interesting patterns on the ships and uh and that artist might be of some interest to you sazabi because i was actually thinking about um doing a buying like a ship model you know from like maybe battleship yamamoto or something like that and painting it like as if it was a chris foss design ship anyways yeah so, well i just think that it's not really clear unless you have been keeping up with uh g witch content and people only watch the anime in my opinion they could have done a little more to expand post events of the prolonged oh yeah 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 I think that's fair. I think that's fair. You are definitely the Gundam expert. I, I am. A, I'm a noob. All right. Okay. Okay, guys. Okay. Let's see. Here's the plan. If you look here, I've got some metallic colored parts like the gun here, as well as the sh shoulder pad. But that is not the end game for these parts. The end game is going to be tinting them with this green glaze. This is a very old paint from Citadel, and it's simply green glaze. I bought this a long time ago, back when I didn't even know what it was. I simply thought I was buying green paint and it took even longer for me to realize how to actually use this, but effectively, it's it's a tint. Now, in the world of, in the world of miniature painting, there's a lot of different products out there. We've been talking about that in the past, but there's there's things that you can use to wash. <laughs> so there's Carmi again. I'll green your glaze. There it is, Carmi. There's a lot of things that you can use to to paint with, and there's a lot of projects that they have to that you can uh, help along with your painting. And one thing that I used quite a lot back then was ink washes. I used a lot of ink washes. And the purpose of an ink wash is to sort of go into the cracks and the crevices of your model 
and 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 essentially shade those parts with the with the ink wash. A glaze works differently where you're actually you actually want to kind of tint and color the surface, you know, the raised and the flat parts rather than the rather than the underneath parts, like the 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 recessed parts. You want to actually shift the tone and the color of all the surface raised and flat parts, not the deep crevices and cracks. If you imagine something like uh, something like in Photoshop or 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 like a, a filter when you're taking photos, you know how you can like change the filters of your of your photo. That's kind of what a glaze is doing, and that's kind of what I'm doing right now. It's right now it's simply just a neutral kind of silver color. But the more I apply this glaze, the more we're kind of shifting it to green. And that's kind of what we're doing right now. We're sort of, it's like, like I said, it's kind of like a filter. And you want to just kind of slowly build that up over time to shift it more green. And I want this to be quite green. But again, we're going to have to do that in several layers. And that's what a glaze is. And it's a technique that um, a lot of people use in miniature painting to really create subtle shifts in color to get very like smooth blends and transitions from from one color to another and to create variants within your model. <laughs> so that's me, I need to get a RE100 Shoku said like Shaku. Okay, thank you for that. And to paint it like a bald face hornet. Ah, it's P Bandai though. Oh. Yep, I live in Canada, so uh, so it's very hard to come by P Bandai stuff. Yeah, so it's pretty illustrated that Propera is just like Big Boss from Metal Gear. Well, that's freaking awesome. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Looking forward to seeing more of that. Yeah, I'm just uh, I'm just here for the ride. I'm just here to see where it goes. It's it's really fun, and I love I love uh, you know hearing the theories and all of that stuff. Okay, Yowza, since uh, since it sounds like uh, you're on top of things, tell me what are your thoughts on the voices of children that we sometimes hear when when Ariel is like using her bits and stuff like that, and uh, what was it she? she uh, it was the battle against uh, Elon, Elon Musk. <laughs> it was the battle against Elon, Elon, where he heard like these child voices. What are you, what's up with that? What's up with that? What do you think? What do you think? Very interesting. It's like the laughter. And it was like I think it, I think there was a shot of like the bits themselves, and he said something like, 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 what is that? Or like, you are, and then he gets cut off. Interesting. It'll also be interesting to see how Suleta kind of like, you know, comes into the realization of, of everything that's happening around her because, you know, she's so naive as, as we've been talking about, right? And, uh, and she doesn't realize a lot of things, obviously, like regarding her mom, regarding, um, regarding, uh, Elon Musk. <laughs> so, uh, I think that's going to be kind of heartbreaking to see once she kind of comes to those, those realizations, but it's also, it's also going to be kind of important for her development as well uh, to, to, to realize these things so that she's not just so ignorant ignorant 
Oh, sorry guys, let me catch up on the chat here. Uh, not Sly posted in Discord progression from base mini to finish. Oh yeah? All done with speed paint. Oh really? Uh, what, what brand is speed paint now? Uh, which, who makes that? I forget. Sounds to be it's annoying to even get P Bandai here in the States. Yeah, yeah. So honestly, given that I think the aerial might be made with dead kids to use the bits, yeah, I was thinking it could be something like that. Would also explain the sentience that Ariel has. Uh, Yowza, my guess is that it's a thing that senses other witches or test pilots who made contact with any Gundam equipment currently in past. It's like uh, the Universal Century and new types being able to detect other new types. I could be wrong. Okay, let me read that again, just so I'm, I'm fully comprehending. My guess is that it's a thing that senses other witches or test pilots who have made contact with any Gundarm equipment currently and past. It's like the, it's like you see and new types being able to detect. Okay, so it's like increased communication. Increased communication. As a matter of fact, um, I was reading some stuff about, about, what's it called? What exactly is permit? You know how they're like always like permit score, permit score, right? And they probably did mention this, but I, I, I kind of missed it, you know? I missed when they were fully explaining it, but they had mentioned, I had to look into it. A uh, permit is actually a resource, if I'm correct. If I'm, if I'm, let me know <laughs> if I'm on the right track here, but what I read was that permit is a resource. And the actual function of permit is, is much like what Yaza said, is something that allows like communication between two two things something along those lines army painter you're meant to get your base highlight shade with one coat ah right 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 yes 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 um yeah because i had heard about that i forgot who i was i was forgetting who exactly had made that but yeah it was army painter and so how are you liking that have you tried uh, contrast because uh, i've never tried contrast paint functions very similarly my understanding Although I do, so I did hear that, um, that Army Painter speed paint, it reactivates when wet. So you need to like, uh, after you apply it and you're happy with it, you have to hit it with a clear coat or some other kind of coat to lock it in. And then you can work on it more if you, if you need to. That's what I heard. Ah, hence the name of the show. Speculation. Yes, yes, of course. Speculation, speculation. That's what I want to hear. I just want to hear the out there thoughts. Because that's what's fun. That's the fun part is just reading like the theories and stuff. I find it fun. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've done so far. So here is the arm now, the shoulder, and it is shifting towards green, but you can still see the underlying uh, 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 silver, and we're going to kind of develop that more. We're going to kind of push it a lot more, but we want to be very careful about doing that slowly and just getting it more towards that point where it's, it's, it's like, uh, more solid. And no, that's not the word I want more green, basically more green, but still keeping the metallic silver intact. That's an interesting greeny silver. Yeah, that was the plan. That was the plan. So I'm glad it's kind of working out. And again, that's going to be kind of like an accent towards the rest of the model. As you can see, the rest of the model is orange. <laughs> it does look like a, yeah, it does look, <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yeah. 
and this this gun here we're gonna kind of um, uh, this gun here we're gonna pick out some of the details so it's not all just a, a green silver but yeah not bad not bad we're getting there I think it's about time guys that we should uh, uh, take a little break from this let's let's partially assemble it if it doesn't fall apart on me let's partially assemble it and then we can kind of uh, assess where we're at actually think it looks great as is yeah thank you thank you um, that's another thing that I, I, I'm trying to be very kind of conscious of is like not to overwork things if it looks good then then we're just gonna leave it at the same time um, I know I have like a vision <laughs> I have a vision in my head of, of how this should look and we're not we're not quite there yet so so there's still more to be done we're still within uh, acceptable limits of, of, of working on this model and uh, and not overworking it. Carmi derp 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 derp. Do, do, do. There we are. Let's. So let's take a look at. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna look at it off screen, guys. But I want to take a, a, a look at. Uh, at not slides work here okay we're just gonna leave that <laughs> just as is because it's a, being a little stubborn you can clip this right here and there we are it's a little easy easier to hold yeah yeah not bad interesting we're getting somewhere we're getting somewhere interesting whoop something fell oh, I was an arm all right, so let's take a look here and check out Not Slides homework. Also, let's uh, catch up with the chat here, everyone. Mm, Yaza, I think Saleta surpasses any witches in the show because she doesn't have any setbacks when she uses the aerial uh, to its full potential. The other girls suffer when using the permit score on their ifrith. Yeah, so one in one interesting thing to take note of with th with that whole situation is like, do you know how everyone uses the um, when everyone kind of activates the permit score thing, right? You know how like their face, their face, they get like some kind of orange pattern, but I. That, that does not happen to Saleta. Am I correct in saying that? That does not happen to Saleta when she's like, uh, when she's piloting her, <clears throat> piloting her, her Gundam. But in the prologue, I think that she did have like a blue pattern, whereas everyone else now has like an orange pattern. We're just getting some of these other parts here with some of that uh, green. Hmm. <laughs> Articulation, yeah, that's not happening. That is not happening. I've seen some people uh, customize their their Gundam artifacts posing them getting them into different poses and stuff I think that looks really cool but I was like no not for me no thanks <laughs> I'm just gonna paint this thing I, I do want more artifacts as I said and and if I end up getting more maybe we can kind of experiment with like customizing them but yeah I, I don't mind them I just wish they were more widely available that's the that's the main thing they're presently kind of tricky to uh to get a hold of and by the time I hit up my local store and and I found out that they had them uh, their box was almost depleted they just had the one box I think and uh, and there was only two models left there was only two kinds left it was this and the Dom and in hindsight I should have just bought like the Dom as well I don't know I was, I was being dumb it happens. All right, guys. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So we're making some decent progress with this, uh, 
with this Zaku 3. And I do want to finish this, you know, to today, tomorrow. Let's take a quick look at... At, uh... Alright, let's get back to painting, guys. Um, we are working on our artifact here. And, uh, yeah, still, still a decent amount of work to be done. But we're getting there. I'm debating whether I want to brush on a gunmetal onto the interior parts. Maybe we'll leave it alone for now. Maybe we'll leave that part alone. The head needs some love for sure. Let's take that off. The head and the backpack. We need to kind of settle upon how we're going to add some accents to the backpack. Uh, you know, we're getting there, we're getting there. And then we gotta do some highlights. I, I'm kind of interested in attempting to do some highlights and shade shading for this model. Almost more like a, a Warhammer model. Do, do, do. Hmm. Alright, what do we like? What do we like? I think we gotta go jazz. Gotta go with some jazz. Vandrily! Oh my gosh, it's Vandrily! What's up, Vandrily? How's it going? Nice to see you here. Yes. Uh, oh my gosh, I've never seen one of those painted before. Yeah. Uh, working on uh, this artifact model. It's pretty interesting. I don't know if you've built one before. But they're pretty fun, and they're pretty challenging. Um, I... I come from Warhammer, like I'm, you know, back in the day I used to paint a lot of Warhammer. So it's not that different from, from, um, from, from Warhammer stuff. But the fact that there's a lot of detail, you know, underneath, like y y if you look like underneath the, the, the legs here and then the skirt, there's a lot of detail there that is kind of hard to get to. And, and yeah, you can disassemble it and stuff, but uh, yeah, thank you so much, Vander Lee. Yeah, I'm kind of used to it, but even then, it's kind of challenging. Thank you so much for the follow, Vandra Lee. Let's give a little shout-out. Thank you so much. Shout-out to Vandra Lee. If you guys don't know, she's like a awesome, awesome builder. I've, I've been lurking. I've been lurking... <laughs> Because I, sometimes I, I like to join and hang out, but I don't like to say anything just because everyone seems to be having a good time in a chat. Everyone's kind of getting along well. I don't want to, you know, upset the mood or, or <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but yes, yes, uh, I was I was watching Vanderly um, work on Apex, is it called? Apex, and you're putting... Uh, you put the cat pilot in it, and it's just it's just a great idea. I love stuff like that. I'm a big fan of, uh, uh, you know, more out, out there kind of ideas. Do you know what I mean? I love stuff like that. But yeah, thank you so much. We'll get to, we'll get to more shoutouts for sure. I've actually been slacking on my shoutouts. But yeah, how you doing? How you doing today? I'd like to finish this artifact, um today or tomorrow you know it is a small model at, at the end of the day so I don't want to I don't want to linger on it for too long and right now we're going to be adding the glaze to the metallic parts we want to get a nice kind of green translucent look to uh, to the metallic parts like the gun here and it's actually looking pretty good right now but I'm kind of want to push it a little more and again uh, when you're working with glazes you're sort of pushing the paint onto the surface and you and the intent is to tint to tint the underlying color uh, much like a filter in in Photoshop or uh, when you're taking photos or movies when movies have like a filter this is kind of what we're doing right now. Uh, 
uh, just on lunch for work right now. Yes, yes, yes. Cool. Nice, 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 nice. Hope you're doing well. I'm alright. I'm just, uh, yeah, we're working on this thing here. And my plan is to kind of work on a lot of projects that I may have started last year and I didn't finish. Do you know what I mean? They've just been lying around and I'm like, man, it's it's January, it's 2023. <laughs> I, I let some stuff kind of linger for too long, so let's let's kind of knock some stuff out. And this is one of them. What paints have you used on this kit? Yeah, so uh, I'm using mostly acrylic paint, uh, Citadel paint. And again, that's like that's like paint from Warhammer, Citadel paint. But also I'm using uh, some some Vallejo, their game color range, as well as as well as their model color range. Those are primarily the, the paints that I'm using. So yeah, that's a nice kind of solid green at this point. And you can still see sort of like the metallic, the metallic underneath. And when it dries, it kind of dries a lot darker. So that's something we'll have to keep in mind. Uh, what brand is the orange? It looks really pretty. Okay, give me a give me one second here. Um, the orange is this. Now, actually, um, I was saying that I was using mostly uh, Citadel colors like this. This is a Citadel brown. Oop, that's not closed. As well as game color like this. But this color, the orange, is mostly this. Ember orange from P3. Formula P3. And it's kind of it's kind of like a, a salmon pink, salmon orangey kind of color, I I guess. It's a bit pink, I think. I just rhymed. <laughs> so that's kind of the orange that I use, but um that being said, I also applied an underlying layer of pink. Uh, this one right here. I applied an underlaying of pink. And then I applied uh, this orange on top. Never heard of them before. It's really gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, I have to say <laughs> that I'm not 100% entirely happy with the orange at the moment but we'll get there I kind of want to do more uh, we're gonna do some highlighting we're gonna do some shading mm, but we're getting there just gnarly that sick thank you yeah it's a um, glazes are an interesting product and an interesting technique that you can use to shift the colors of your of your model of, of the surface of your model and the real, the real sort of juice, the real, the juice. What the hell? The real trick is to, uh, is to do it just in layers, just a little bit at a time, and you're shifting that color ever so slightly, layer by layer. Let it dry. Do another layer. Let it dry, and then uh, you'll be good. You'll be Gouda. Murdoch, what up, Murdoch? How you doing today? Nice to see you here. How's it going? What up? What up? Let's do a little shout out. Do a little shout out too. I've been slacking, guys. I said 2023 is the year that we're gonna be on top of our uh, our shout outs. Shout out Murdoch, who was part of the Gunpla Ball Drop at the end of the year. Painted a, and built a fan, an amazing racing theme ball. What are you up to now? What are you up to? Uh, what are you building these days, Murdoch? Ah, there's some more green parts that I have to get. Hmm. Murdoch, good. I need to do the rest of my Gundam artifacts. Ah, so you've built the you built some before. How did you like them? How did you like that experience? And and did you uh, did you paint them? Cause man, they're it's kind of tricky. Like 
I was saying previously that, like, yes, I've, I kind of come from miniatures, so it's not that bad, but it's still a little tricky to get all them details. Yeah, you, do you paint them too? That's what I want to know. You paint those too. I really want to make a base for this too, guys. <laughs> but anytime I make a base, a uh, friend of the channel, Bacon Beer Can, uh, mentions that I take too long and I spend way more time making a base than the model itself. I've seen people just mount them on like a wooden plinth. You know, like a trophy has like a, a base, a stand. And that looks really nice. I kind of want to do that. But I mean, would I just go to the... Would I just go to the hardware store and just ask them to cut some some wood for me? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Murdoch, getting MG Barbatos painted, but tonight we'll be doing a sim rig build. Got my new racing rig. Nice. Hell yeah. Sweet. MG Barbatos, that's cool too. Yeah, I, I really like the... Um, I really like... The Iron-Blooded Orphans designs. You know, because they're, they're quite unusual compared to most other Gundam kits, right? But, I have not built one yet. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm thinking in my head, I want one. I should get one. But also, I'm there's like a billion other things I want. I'm sure all of you are fully aware of <laughs> of that situation. It's just so much, so much that I want. Gotta chill. Gotta slow my roll. Uh, Vanderly, there's also a wood aisle in craft stores. Or a good trick is the dollar store and some wood stain. Ah, you know what? I have checked. I'm a, I'm a big fan of my of the dollar store uh, here in Canada. Got some pretty decent stuff um, uh, at the Canadian Dollarama. But I haven't really been looking for that, for like wooden plinths and wooden stuff. And also the craft store thing. Uh, yes, I should check there too. I should check. Oh. We're getting there, guys. We're getting there. It's starting to look like something. Starting to look like something. I guess we should paint this face. Oh, it's so small. It's so tiny. Good lord. I'm kind of freaking out over how small this is. Murdoch, I did the Rick Dom and painted it for a Gunpla Secret Santa gift. Oh, that's cool. That's nice. It was fun, but the build was a bit finicky. Yeah, yeah. I mean, these parts are so small. So I feel you on that one, man. There was a handful of times when I'm build I was building this thing. I was like, yo, this is so small. I feel like I'm going to break it in my hand. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Dollarama. Yeah, it's called Dollarama over here. <laughs> it's called Dollarama. It's pretty good. I have to say that the Canadian Dollarama is pretty darn good. I've got a handful of hobby stuff. Uh, from there. Just, uh, it's just good. Uh, I don't know about Canadian craft stores, but, uh, ours in the States usually has great pieces for bases. All right, let's go, let's go. Next time, uh, next time I'm out in the big city, because I live kind of in a small town, I'm gonna head on down to the big city, head on down to, uh, Michael's. I think Michael's is in the States, right? Yeah, they've got Michael's over there. Head on down to Michael's and see what you got. See what you got. Oof. I'm nervous. I'm nervous about what to paint this head. But it needs some kind of accent. Okay, okay. Okay, we gotta do some panel lines. We can do that. Let's do some panel lines. <laughs> I'm gonna hold off on the head. We, t we, we did the tinting of all the uh, all them green parts. But uh, yeah, let's do some panel lining. We can do that. Okay, how are we going to do the panel lining? Uh, we can try this Liquitex 
carbon black ink, or we can try the Citadel stuff. All right, let's just use this. Ba -ba -ba. Seam lines were a bit much. Did lots of gluing and sanding. Yeah, actually, <laughs> there's a part here where I'm not sure if it's a seam line or if it's like a part of the design. There's a handful of parts like that. And yeah, I, I did have to do a bit of seam line removal. Especially it's so small, it's a bit of a pain in the butt. But you know, you know, you know. Let's try and make it work. So one, one thing that I have yet to buy, guys, and I really should try it and get it, is like panel liner. You know, the actual panel liner that, that most people use from Tamiya. I mostly use stuff like this from Citadel. Citadel color. But this is kind of, um, this is kind of a bit too watery. Got to get back to work. Have a wonderful stream day. Yes, thank you so much for hanging out, Vanderly. I really do appreciate it. And uh, yeah, have a good rest of your day. I'll, I will definitely catch you next time. <laughs> I was like, what am I looking for? Oh yeah, there we are. Ba -da -ba. Got blessed up by Vanderly. That's cool. Just watering down this ink. Yeah, you guys might uh, have noticed this, or maybe you have not noticed this. <laughs> but I, 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 if you guys are streaming, I might be there. I might very well be there. But I'm lurking. I'm lurking like a creep. Uh, and like I said, it's just because, uh, you know. I guess I guess I might be shy. <laughs> that might be the the end all be all to it. I might be a little shy, but also it's, it's also just a matter of again, everyone just is kind of in a in a groove and I I'm just like, yeah. That's cool. Whoa. Yeah, so now we're panel lining and I'm doing it by brush. And I'm using the, uh, this ink. This is Artists Grade Artists uh, Liquitex Acrylic Ink. And I mean, the operation is essentially the same. However, it doesn't flow as nicely, I have to say, as as what I've seen in practice with uh, with Tamiya Panel Liner. And also, I'm, I don't have a gloss coat on top which would definitely help a lot too uh, in terms of getting getting the product to flow into the cracks and crevices instead I'm kind of just relying on on like my hand steady steady steadying my hand to get it done Ooh, hearts are falling off cool awesome ah but yeah this is a, uh, this is kind of fun. This is a fun project. Um, I kind of just wanted to see where it would take me, without having too much of a plan. And it definitely took me places. I think that the the bayonet here, I think I might paint it black. That might be kind of neat. Mirdak, I just gnarly actually designed my own mount out of plywood. Uh, cut it with my dad's big CNC. Nice. That's cool. Yeah, that's going to be sick. Wait, so you're streaming later tonight then? That would definitely like to see. All right, let's do some panel lining on the orange, and I'm already getting shit where it doesn't belong. Awesome. Mm. 
Might have to go into total concentration breathing mode, guys. I did water down this ink. So yeah, I think uh, that's definitely going to be the next thing I get is some panel liner and try out, try out like you know the more standard technique of panel lining. Uh, streaming to ah yes 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 like you said yes the new rig exciting. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Okay. Okay. Not bad. I, again, sorry guys if I'm not uh, chatting. Trying to focus just a little bit on this. This is how I... This is mostly... The technique that I use for panel lining, and uh, yeah, it's it's definitely more co time consuming. I find because like I love watching, you know, seeing people panel line, and it just like drops, and then it flows so nicely. Um, yeah, this is not as nicely flowing, but you know, I do like Tommy liner, but it seems like thinning other paint does the same thing. Yeah, um, I'm always worried about getting the right consistency and thickness and thinness of the paint because I've, I've, I've had issues in the past where um, sorry concentrating again I had issues in the past where I've thinned it out too much and it's just like it's just not really getting a solid coat anymore I mean, should I glue it now? No, I don't think I'll glue it now. Okay. Yes, and there's something here. This is very, very small. Very, very small detail. Goes around the leg. See how that looks. Ah. Yeah, it's very fussy. That's the name of the game with the uh, Gundam artifact is that there's just some really, really fussy parts. You're just gonna have to figure out how to deal with. I mean, once I put these parts on, I might just leave it. <laughs> leave it on. I, I just want to see how it looks when it's assembled to kind of gauge where I'm at with this thing. There's some folks out there that are really good with like kind of envisioning how the rest of the model is going to look without having to assemble it. You know, I'm, I'm not one of them. So I gotta have, I have to occasionally assemble and disassemble parts just to kind of assess. Oh, there we go. There we go. Go something like that. The next one. I don't want to overdo it with the green. That's the other thing. Kind of want to use it sparingly as an accent. <laughs> yeah. Da -da -da. <laughs> I 
Very fussy. Okay. Where's my tweezers? Where are my tweezers at? I do not see them. So we'll have to struggle. I like berserk. Just gonna struggle. Oh, it went in. Nice. <laughs> okay. Uh, just gnarly, I feel that. Uh, do you just draft sketches on a pad or a tablet to work off of when you're planning a paint job? Um, it's a mix. Sometimes I do that, and it's like a really, really a rough plan, you know? And sometimes I'll I'll go just straight up and just just run with it and see. So something like this, with this project, I was like, I don't want to do much planning. I just want to paint it and see where it takes me, right? So I was like, I was like, let's do orange because I looked at my cabinet <laughs> where I have all my finished models, and I was like, oh, I don't have much orange. I don't have any orange models, so. So let's make something orange. <laughs> That's basically it. And then the more I painted it, I kind of started to think like, oh, let's kind of base the color scheme off of orange cream soda. That was that was the the main kind of thrust and theme was orange cream soda. So I looked up cans of of orange of soda, and uh, I kind of came up with this. But we're still there's still a lot that needs to be done like again there's panel lining for all for many other parts and um and accents we have to kind of do some accents on this yeah but you know I, it's a uh, it's just kind of part of the process bill's looking super sick so far yeah thank you thank you uh, not slide if you can find the line art photoshop helps immensely yes so i've, I've kind of done a bit of that as well if not the line art i actually just take a photo of my model in black and white ah maybe i'll show you guys uh some pictures of that uh on the discord <laughs> i keep on saying discord <laughs> discord i can show you guys some of that on there or on um on instagram kind of what i do is i just take a black and white photo and then i'll just i'll just color it in in photoshop that way to give me a rough idea But I do like the idea of just kind of going for it and trying to make up things as I go along. Although that does result in having to repaint areas uh, as, as I've had to do for this model. There's a number of parts on this model I've had to redo. I've had to redo multiple times because, again, for this project I, I didn't really plan too much. There we go. <laughs> I put one thing in and the other thing falls out. But I don't want to glue anything right now. I don't want to glue anything at the moment. Put one thing in, the other thing falls out. It's like I'm building mega blocks. I used to build a lot of Lego, and occasionally I would pick up like some le mega block stuff. And that stuff was not good. It fell apart. Okay, let's glue this part on at least. I think we can. Ah, shit. Never thought of that's a good idea. Yeah. <sighs> I'm thinking the head might need some kind of brown. Some dark brown, but I'm wondering where. Where indeed should that go? Y'all ever fucked with Kinex? Uh, yes. Kinex was pretty cool. I think I had some of those. You know, sometimes it helps just like stepping away from a project too. Ah, yes, on the fins. Yes, I was thinking of green, but I think orange is a better call, just gnarly. Putting some of the orange somewhere on the head. 
on the fins. I guess the interior visor should be, uh, what do you think about the interior visor? Like, probably dark brown? And then maybe a bit of orange somewhere. This might be a situation where I, can, I should take a photo now. Because I'm kind of like a, I'm kind of, we're so close. Uh, but yeah, maybe I could take a photo and kind of uh, do some Photoshop to mess around and then decide from there. Friend has a Kinex rubber band Gatling gun thing? That sounds awesome. <laughs> I think Kinex made Titanfall Max, which is kind of cool. Very short lived. A brassy vibe would be nice. Mm. Backpack could get some of the green. Yes. Yes. I think we should have some accents. Small little accents of green. Of the green. Possibly. Possibly the dots. Yes. That definitely sounds like the wave. Yeah, sorry guys, I'm just staring at this thing and looking at where I want to go with it next. The big problem area right now is, is definitely the head and the backpack. The shield, I want to do a stripe. The shield, I want to do a stripe of the green. And that's why I bought the masking tape. But I really don't know if that's going to work. <laughs> Uh, what were you thinking about the hoses? The hoses definitely, they do have paint on them, but the hoses actually do need something else. The hoses need something else. Because right now they're this dark brown. And the dark brown kind of makes the model, makes the waist disappear. Do you know what I mean? And if I were to paint it something, if I were to give it something, it would then kind of get more mass. If you know what I mean. It would, uh... <laughs> I just spun the thing around and it flew off. Yeah. We gotta think about that. We gotta do something about that. Yeah, the masking tape. I'm not even sure. Hopefully the masking tape will work. Hopefully it'll work. It might turn out like doo-doo. But yeah, we're very close. And, and it's, it's really at this point where I gotta kind of slow down and just assess where we're at with this model so that we can kind of finish off in a way where we're not having to like take things back and, and adjust it and blah blah blah. <clears throat> Copper brass highlights to define the silhouette better. Uh, magnets might have <laughs> magnets, yeah. Yeah, here, woo! I, I, I do need to pick up magnets. I mean, it's not too necessary for this model kit because at the end of the day, it's gonna be in just a stationary position when it's finished. So I'll just glue everything when it's done. So, so the thing about copper and brass is like, I'm a little conscious of uh, introducing more colors to what's already here. So we want to be very picky about uh, another color, even if it's like copper and brass. But I, I was thinking about the, the interior legs here. Like when you see like there's a lot of mechanical detail uh, in the legs and that's currently just dark, dark brown. And so that might be a good place to do uh, a copper or brass, for sure. But yeah, here, let me take a picture of this thing, <laughs> guys. I'm going to take a picture of it, and then I'm going to uh, probably wrap things up real soon. Because I've just been looking at this thing and waffling. But yeah, all thought, all all suggestions are, are super, super welcome, guys. Because like I said, I'm, I'm kind of like at the point where I need to start thinking about what to do next. I'm not really sure. 